Okay, we're on the evening of July 4th. Ooh, and we have a satellite going right through a globular cluster. Is that cool or what? Hey, just caught that in time. All right, looking through an image intensifier, an L3 unfilmed image intensifier plugged into a Takahashi TSA-120 telescope. And we have a Panasonic GH5S camera coupled to the back of that image intensifier with an ITT-1X relay, carefully focused so that we have pinpoint spots, correct? That's about as good as I can get on focus. So this is M3, a uh, globular star cluster in the constellation Canis Venatici, magnitude 6.4. It's getting a little low in the sky because it's uh, past 10.30 in the evening right now. But I'm just going to do some globs. So we were starting with M3. We're going to move on right away to M10 in the constellation Ophiuchus with my go-to mount. So let's just spin around here a little. Let it pan through. It takes a few seconds. It's slowing down. It's almost on it. And where are you, dude? There we go. That's M10. Constellation Ophiuchus, just uh, maybe half an hour to an hour past the meridian. This guy's probably a little bit higher in the sky than M3 was, which is off to the northwest. This is kind of to the uh, due southish, but it's up pretty high. It's about 60, 75 degrees off the horizon. So M10 in Ophiuchus, magnitude 6.6. .6. Decent core on that guy. It's a little spiral almost arm sticking out a little bit. Let's try another one in Ophiuchus. <laughs> if I can figure out how to operate my stuff here. Um, what was that before? 10. Let's try M62. Messier 62, which has about the same magnitude. Should be fairly close by. Okay. Yeah, and way up there, that's a bright one, but she's a little bit on the small side. M62, magnitude 6.6. .6. You'll see my computer mount isn't perfectly aligned. That's kind of how things go when you don't do a drift alignment, but that's okay, because I'm still get, hitting my targets close enough. Magnification here, let's see, um, 100 millimeters, four times nine, 36-ish power, roughly for these star clusters. That's M62, bright and small. Let's go back to the uh, hand unit here and dial in M19, which we'll try now. Where are you gonna go? Uh, there it goes. M19, right here. Also small. Quite small, actually. Really tightly packed. This would probably look better in a bigger scope. But I don't have a bigger scope tonight. I have a TSA 120. Okay, let's move on to something more interesting. That's my 27.2, by the way. Let's go knock it out of the park with uh, M13 in Hercules, which is straight up right now. It'll take a little time to get there. We're moving up in declination, higher and higher and higher. Zipping through the star fields. Where are you, Mr. M13? Right there, yeah. Let's hit that right on the money. The big guy, that would be uh, 925.9. That's the brightest one I've looked at so far. Again, it's got some of those daddy long leg kind of spider arms on it, sort of sticking out in various directions, or fireworks arms, maybe is a better way to say it. That's one of the larger or brighter star clusters in the sky, at least from the northern hemisphere. Looking good. Let's try one more that's bright, but a little on the small side. Um, M92, which is nearby. By the way, we're shooting this from Mount Pinus, California. Get some various people talks as folks walk past the scope and or yell at their buddies and friends. So that's M92. That guy's Pretty tiny, but pretty bright. You can see that in binoculars piece of cake, just as you could pretty much any of these others. So there you have it, Panasonic GH5S camera, and I forgot to even mention my camera settings, darn it. Well, here they are. That's 60th of a second shutter speed. ISO is 1600. I'm in standard picture profile, and my white balance is set to uh, 4000 Kelvin color temperature. So that's going to be a wrap at just about five minutes. Wow, long video. Anyway, there you go. Star clusters with the Takashi TSA 120F 7.5 telescope. That's it.